This tutorial is on advanced colour popping using custom masks. You will need to be reasonably experienced in PD and image editing to use this properly. For this tutorial uh, we'll take a clip that was shot in Rome in September 2009. It wasn't shot for this particular purpose and what we want to do is to have a monochrome video and we will colour pop the statue and its plinth together with the bollards stretching down into the distance there and the rest of it will be a monochrome saturation fade to full colour through the length of the video okay now that we've planned what we're going to do let's move into PD first thing we need to do is to import a media file that we're going to colour pop. Having reviewed my files I'm going to choose 1549. Here it is in our media library. Okay now we need to choose a suitable frame to form the basis of our mask. So let's choose that one. We take a snapshot of it and we'll save it as mask 1549 for that particular clip and we will be saving it in whatever is uh, the default save preference that we've set up. Okay. That now appears in our media library but we don't need to do any more in PD for the moment. What we need to do is move into our image editor whatever one you're going to work with and we import our file in and what we need to do now is to select a, those areas that we are going to fill with white which are going to be the transparent areas for the mask in PD. It sounds a little complex but once you get your head around it it's not too bad. So I'm going to select the statue area here as you can see within the little crawling ants I'm also selecting the pillars that recede into the distance. The exact method you use for this will depend on your uh, image editing software. But basically what we need to do is to be able to select the items that we are going to fill with white. What that means is that when we have done that and we have filled them with white we will end up with an image that looks like that. So remember, the white areas are going to be transparent in the PD mask. The other areas will be hidden. But in order for them to be hidden, we need to make them transparent. It sounds illogical, but that's the way it works. So what we have to do, and again this will depend entirely on the editor that you choose, we have to remove the background. So for example, if I remove the background by using the background eraser tool I can start to get a transparent background. Moving back to what is nearly our finished image we will end up with an image that is wholly transparent apart from the selected areas that are filled in white and that is the custom mask we use in PD. So in order for it to be used in PD we must save the image as a PNG file and we must also save it as a thumbnail PNG file. Now you can do both of those from within your image editor or you can save your file and then you can resize your file to a different size for the thumbnail PNG. How you do that depends a little bit on what software you're using. Okay, let us say we have saved those two files. We now need to get them into the appropriate folder within PD. On my system it is in C drive, program files, cyberlink, 
power director masks and you'll notice all the standard masks are here in PD and each mask has two files one is a full sized file in this case it's 720 by 540 and with virtually the same name there is an 80 by 60 thumbnail image so those are the two files that we have to produce so whichever way you have done it you will end up with two files one I have left the same size as my original snapshot 1280 by 720 as a PNG image and next door to it is an 80 by 60 version of the same thing that enables PD to show a small thumbnail when you come to choose the mask that you want to use. So now we need to move back into PD.